The EU Parliament adopted a non-binding resolution this past week requiring companies to be subject to a single environmental liability regime rather than the existing 27 national systems that are inconsistent and poorly coordinated, to be honest. For more, we're joined by Virginia Sinkovicius, EU Commissioner for the Environment. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I want to start out with what these lawmakers backed in the sense that do you think this is the right approach? Instead of being beholden for corporations to 27 different countries, there's just one regime for everyone to get in line? I mean, of course, it's uh, we welcome uh, this initiative. Uh, we welcome uh, the parliament's position. And it's true that uh, EU environmental legislation creates a lot of obligation that uh, apply to companies. And we have, for example, a law on industrial emissions, which requires many large operators to operate in, in line with the environmental permits. If companies breach these permits, they are li uh, liable to administrative or, or other sanctions under the applicable uh, national implementing legislation. And in addition, these sanctions, uh, companies may be liable for environmental damage under the environmental liability directive. So in environmental damage covers damage to land, uh, land, water and, and biodiversity. And more specifically, companies are liable uh, to prevent damage where there is an imminent threat and, and remediated any damage that they cause. And that could mean, of course, restoring a damaged habitat, for instance. But what I would like the most to stress that these and other provisions are not primar uh, primarily there to punish. They, their, their main goals and advantages are uh, that they create a clear level playing field for companies across the EU, for 27 mm -hmm. member states, with common rules, and that they keep uh, people and the environment safe together uh, and for future generations. And most importantly, that they contribute to our common goal of 2030 and then, of course, full decarbonization to 2050. What, what can the Commission do in terms of proposing either standardizations or as well as broadening the types of incidents that account for environmental liability? So we currently working on a proposal to revise the Environmental Crime Directive uh, that dates back to 2008. And in, it is the EU main instrument to protect the environment through, through criminal law. Uh, when companies break relevant rules, uh, they can be liable to criminal sanctions under this directive. And we recently reviewed it and found that it's not fit for purpose anymore. Uh, so we are now looking into possible improvements, for instance, on the scope of the directive, sanction types and, and, and levels or, or very practical issues such as on uh, law enforcement and, and statistical data collection and determining more precisely what can constitute environmental crime. So the public consultation on, on the environmental crime directive closed uh, on, on 3rd of May and yielded about four, uh, 500 replies. So we are currently analyzing the results. And for our review process, the input and, and contributions of all stakeholders concerned, of course, are uh, extremely important uh, as a part of the success. And so after a first analysis, we can already say that the big majority of responders welcomes the revision of the directive and agrees that the directive needs uh, improvements. We are also currently conducting targeted stakeholder consultations with environmental law enforcement practitioners mm -hmm. and, and, and networks, uh, Euro, Europol, Eurojust, environmental NGOs. Uh, and a proposal to, to revise the directive is currently planned for uh, uh, the end of 2021. Last week, we had major blows to oil companies, Exxon, Chevron, Shell, the biggest of the big oil. But this came um, from um, a court, but also from shareholders when it came to Chevron and Exxon. Do you expect this to be a partnership between governments and things like the commission is doing, plus shareholder activism? I think there is more and more activity uh, as regards the, 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 the Green Deal. If, for example, when we adopted the Green Deal one and a half years, ago, we can hide that there was some skepticism in, in, in the room, and but uh, especially from the business community. But now, uh, one year and a half in that journey, I think, first of all, business sees that it's an opportunity. Uh, secondly, they clearly see that more and more countries are getting on board. And so having the first movers advantage 
is is something uh, unique and usually in history there is not so many chances and we worked hard to to get uh, boardrooms on 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 board as well so that uh, uh, companies and especially their management uh, would be on board understanding the scope of change and their role what about uh, water down or even spurious claims of ESG adherence on corp from corporations? Are you worried about this so-called greenwashing from corporations? There is always uh, on any issue, we always have uh, extensive uh, stakeholders consultations. And of course, some of them come with the position which uh, fits, uh, let's say, their profile most, but I think that's the, the, the role of the Commission to play as an honest broker uh, to make sure that we maintain uh, and move forward with our goals, uh, that we align member states and make sure that uh, the EU uh, legislation is implemented among them. And of course, that we have a society on board uh, supporting us. Uh, Usually we manage to find uh, balanced uh, decisions. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, speaking about the Green Deal, most of our initiatives are very well known uh, to business uh, community in advance. They do not come as a sort of surprise. I want to ask you about uh, the Commission's zero pollution goal. Clearly, we're not going to get to zero pollution. So what does it exactly mean? So what it means uh, literally is that we want to push down pollution so it's not uh, harmful to uh, society, to people and to environment. It doesn't mean zero, but it means uh, that we push it uh, down as much that it's uh, not, uh, not harmful anymore. And, and, and uh, our recently adopted zero pollution action plan uh, have outlined very clearly that vision. Uh, the action plan ties together all relevant EU policies to tackle and, 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 and prevent pollution, addressing pollution affecting air, uh, water and soil, marine and noise pollution, as well as consumer products. And we have very concrete uh, targets. First of all, uh, key targets up to 2030. Uh, and these are improving air quality to reduce the number of premature deaths caused by air pollution by 55%, improving water quality, uh, by reducing waste, uh, uh, by reducing waste from plastic litter and, and, and microplastics, uh, then improving soil quality by reducing nutrient losses and chemical pesticides used by 50%, reducing by 25% the EU ecosystems where air pollution threatens biodiversity and so on. So basically, uh, by 2050, as I've mentioned, we want to, 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 to push uh, pollution level so that they do no harm anymore to uh, environment and to people. But Virginius, how do, how do you make sure that these things are actually implemented? How, how do you set these targets and make sure countries are adhering to it? So first of all, of course, our, our targets are uh, scientifically assessed uh, and uh, that they could be uh, realistically, let's say, uh, landed uh, and implemented on the ground. Uh, I agree that uh, the challenge is huge. Uh, but uh, the urgency and, and moral obligation to act is even greater. At the moment, one in eight, de eight deaths in the EU is linked to environmental pollution, and 90% of these deaths are due to chronic diseases, most often cancer. And most importantly, that uh, most vulnerable groups are the hardest hit. So we cannot compromise the health of people and the planet to keep doing things the way we do now. Uh, and clean air cannot be cannot be a luxury, uh, and I, our ambition to protect the health of citizens cannot be limited. So, already, if you look at the EU legislation, uh, improvement has been achieved between, for example, 2000 and 2017. Uh, the in, uh, the environmental economy in the EU outperformed the overall economy and created more jobs. Uh, mm -hmm. So investing okay. in clean, circular and green solutions, it, goes, it, it also goes uh, hand in hand with businesses and jobs. And just to, to, to wrap, wrap it up, uh, member states are going to have a unique chance. Uh, we have a recovery uh, plan with the next generation EU, uh, uh, which is more than 1.8 trillion uh, to build back more fairly, more sustainable with far lower levels of pollution.
and I think the the, the plan can can Virginius? and is going to yes. We're going to leave it there. That's all the time we have. But thank you so much for joining us. Massive undertaking. Virginius uh, Sinkavichas, thank you so much. The EU Commissioner for the Environment.